Hey, hey, what's up? This is Dave from Dog Eat Dog. Pessoal da Red Flow, aqui é a Vani, diretamente da Bélgica no Festival Gruz Rock. E eu tô aqui com o meu amigo Dave, que toca no Dog Eat Dog. Hello Brazil, we miss you. Uh, when, when you guys played in Brazil? Because probably I wasn't even born, maybe. Okay, we played in Brazil in 1997. We did, I think, 10 shows or 11 shows. And it was an incredible experience, but it was also one of the hardest tours we ever did. The travel was crazy, like there was no sleep at all, but the crowds were, cr were incredible. So I, I love being able to see 10 different cities in Brazil. Um, so it was a really incredible learning experience and uh, the crowds were amazing too, but for some reason we never went back. So we're missing it. We had one or two offers over the years, but they turned out to be not reliable. So we didn't make it back. Oh, I get it. So which which place in Brazil, do, do you remember like vivid in your mind uh, how, how it was? Like which state was the best? Uh, was the Crowley one? Like it was a lot of young kids because in 1997 I was a little kid by that time. So I, I, I wasn't there. But like I started listening to you guys when I was pretty young. I remember seeing you guys play on MTV in Brazil. Like the Who's the King video clip is like, like the iconic video. So like tell me about how was the experience in Brazil? If I had the tour book in front of me, I could remember better, but we're talking about 22 years ago. So I'll, rem I'll say we flew into Sao Paulo and uh, it was very like exciting right away, you know? And we, we the first night we got there, it was like crazy partying and it was really insane. But I remember the traffic was so bad that it took all day to go anywhere you wanted. Um, Brasilia was an interesting uh, city. Oh really? Why? Because Brasilia is the capital of Brazil, where it has like the, the Congress and uh, all the dirty politics are there. The buildings were very interesting. All the architecture was so random and so cool that I really thought this is something that I remember. Um, we went to Rio, of course, and had a, you know, you see that beach in Rio, like you see in the movies, and seeing it for Rio is pretty incredible. Uh, there were some smaller cities that I don't remember. I wish I had my book, but we ate really well um, and we toured with some nice bands. One band was called Catapulta. I never heard of this band before. I maybe I don't. They're not so around, but um, uh, at one point the singer of Rato de Parao was traveling with us, Gordo. João Gordo. Yeah, so I got to meet him and party and hang out with him on that tour. So oh my, that's really cool. Oh my god. So uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I can ask a lot about this because it's been like you said, like 20 years ago. So um, let's talk about Dog Eat Dog. So you guys like broke the band for a while. You guys didn't play for a while. We've never broken up or separated. We played. We've been together for 29 years, and we consistently played every year. Uh, so a lot of people thought we broke up for some reason. We just kind of went under the radar a little bit. We were touring, we were constantly playing, but we were out of, I guess, the public eye. We were still playing big festivals. You could see from our website all the stuff we did. So we find it incredible that like people thought we broke up when the proof is right online that we didn't. Uh, but. The good news is we just signed a new record deal and we came out with a new EP and we're working on a full length record and we're re-releasing our old record so there's going to be so much dog eat dog in the next two years that uh, it really feels like it's a comeback for us. Yeah, it's like uh, when I start seeing you guys on big festivals again, I was like, wait, I haven't heard about them like for a while and it was like they never play in Brazil again anymore. I don't know. And then I start seeing it was like, well, I thought their band was over. That's what I got asked it. Because like I don't I don't know what happened because like now you're like you, you guys like headlines in a, in some festivals here and there. So that was like curious because there are a lot of people that thought you guys like stopped playing for for good. So I was like, well, maybe they come back. Like, that's nice. You know, we got a new booking agency, a new record label, and when you have new people working, they get you seen again, you know? Yeah. So we're very, very fortunate. We're very blessed. This band has started in my basement when we were just teenage kids, and 
it, we still friends today and still playing music and making people happy and entertaining and I couldn't ask for anything more. That's a, a, a blessing to me. So it's the, the same guys that started the band, is the same guys playing, is the original formation or somebody like left the band? A lot of people left. Uh, me, me and John are there from day one. So our drummer joined in 95, so he's been there 24 years. It's a long time. Um, our guitar player is the relative new guy. We started playing with him in 2005. So we're still 14 years, you know. So these are guys who've been playing a long time together and we're really brothers and friends as well as a band. Well, that's all that matters because like you have to have like your friends, like you have to have a friendship to have a band because like you're touring all the time and then you have to deal with like uh, all the bullshit they have like on festivals too and if you don't have like a good a vibe, that, that doesn't work. So like it's like friends and fun and make other people like have fun too. And like Dog to Dog is a band and like it's like fun. Like I see, rem I remember seeing, watching videos of their shows, everybody jumping and it's such a good vibe. I'm really excited to see you guys playing. We're still jumping and we're still having fun and last night, the night before, every night on this trip, uh, people always say like, I feel like I'm 15 again. I'm, I feel like I'm my youth again and like, isn't that incredible that you could buy a ticket and feel young? It's like a little time machine to the 90s, you know, and it, I'm just proud that with these group of guys we're able to do that for people and and people call us every year to play and you know it just it's great for us i'm going home tomorrow regrouping we're going to come back and we're doing a lot of big festivals in july and august and then we're doing a fall club tour september october probably i hope with billy bio Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, that's what I was talking about because even for me, like I'm really young, but uh, there's a lot of bands that I, I grew up listening like you guys that I was like, may, I would never have the chance to see them playing because like I'm, I'm here in Brazil and then, like now I'm, like, I'm, I'm seeing everything. I'm just like, it feels like when I was a teenager, like seeing all of my favorite bands playing now. It's never too late and that's the great thing about music. It's timeless so you can If you don't see it then, you've seen it now, your life is still complete, right? Yes. So you guys just released a new album like a couple of months ago. Can you talk a little bit about this album, like the influences, like what you guys are talking just for the people that didn't listen yet? It's our first new music in 12 years. So it took that long to like regroup and get it together. And we released four new songs that are ranging from like old school doggy dog to like reggae, yeah, a, a little like almost ska music and pop music all mixed in. I mean, we're always been a band that does whatever we want to do within that doggy dog framework, but we like to explore. And this EP is not the heaviest thing we ever did, but we really like to write good songs and we all felt that these are worth releasing. And then we decided with the record label to record some live uh, bonus tracks to make it a little bit more of a, a, a listening experience and uh, we're happy with it it's really meant as just a hello world we're still alive we're still making music we got some really good reviews and we're working on a full-length record already we're like I don't want to say halfway through but we're getting to the midpoint of making this thing we have another year before it has to come out so we have plenty of time over the summer to finish recording and write more songs and everything. So we know we're going to have a single out later this year and a 2020 full length record. And the influences on the new record, I can tell you, some of them are a lot heavier. So it's going to be, it's going to give the old school fans a little more of what they expect from us. Oh, that's great. So now I want to talk about something more personal because I, I follow you on Instagram and you always posting those DVDs of like horror movies and, and I, don't, I don't know how to pronounce that. It's fresh or thrash. How do you pronounce the, those, the, those movies? Because I don't know how to pronounce the name. I always say trash movies. Uh, well, trash is good. I mean, horror films. I just say horror, cult, exploitation, foreign, you know, anything that's not mainstream Hollywood, I like. So, Me too. Yeah, I, I like to be, even if it's trash movies, it's still more fun to drink a beer and watch a shitty movie than to watch some millions and millions of dollars of nothing. I, I get offended by that. I like to watch people make m movies and music from the heart, you know, and all the money in the world doesn't necessarily make it better, right? So 
I spend a lot of time collecting. I like to like get to a city and find a record store or a DVD shop, and I get to explore the city by doing that, and I meet people. And yeah, so horror is my life when I'm outside of Doggy Dog, and it's been like that for over 30 years. Yeah, like you say, like about uh, big movies. Um, like uh, the first movie that I listened was like um, Brain Dead. It was like a low budget movie, but it was so much fun because like these new movies, it's just like a lot of expectation, and then you get there, you just get like frustrated because it's not horror. It's just like media. Yeah, I saw that movie in the theater when it came out, and it was so bloody and it was incredible. I mean, I'd already been a diehard horror fan, but. That movie like was one of those that like really made you happy. The amount of blood and the comedy. So that's it. that's what I love. So I'm always just trying to see everything and collect it. And one day when I die, there's going to be a very lucky person to find all my stuff. <laughs> so I hope to pass it on. Yeah, that's what I do with like records and toys, collectibles too. It was like this is like my thing, and then maybe I'll pass it to the next generation, or maybe they were gonna burn the shit and be like, "What the fuck is that?" And my mom were crazy or whatever. But like, what is the like the most um, hard movie to find? Like a DVD that you were like looking for really hard, and you couldn't find a DVD for that. That's a good question because of the internet, it's not that hard to find anything. No? But before the internet. Oh, yeah. When you, like, we didn't have phones, we didn't have any maps telling us where to go. We literally had to get off a, a, a bus or a van and explore and find things. And that was a lot of fun doing that. So, um, in Europe, they always, in Europe, they always had really, like, hard to find movies. Like Cannibal Holocaust, you know that movie? Right, so that was the one where I remember coming to Holland for the first time and seeing it in a video store and be like, oh my God, it's actually here. In the US, you never would have seen that then, you know? It's illegal to watch in USA, that movie, right? No, no, it's, it's out legally. Oh, it is? Because there's uh, some movies in Brazil, you have to go to the deep web to find that because like, it's so like, oh, like really shocking to watch, so they don't let you watch. So, well, thank you for the interview, Dave. Hey. So good to see you. No, so good to Love see you. to you and all your friends. Ah, uh, thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh, of course. Então, gente, vamos conferir o show do Dog to Dog mais tarde. Fica aí no canal da Red Flow, se inscreve, comenta aí o que vocês achou e até a próxima.